All right, let's keep going. So in the last video, we downloaded some historical Bitcoin data using the Binance API. So in this video, we're gonna see if we can apply some technical analysis to that data using a package called TALib. So I think TALib is actually written in C or C++, but there's actually a Python wrapper for TALib, so I have it pulled up here. So if you go to ta-lib.org, it will pull up the technical analysis library. So this is actually, I believe, written in C or C++ originally, but there's a Python wrapper around it that allows you to use the same functions. So if you browse through uh, this website, you'll see uh, it has a variety of indicators that are built in, including you know Bollinger Bands. You can detect various candlestick patterns. Uh, there's some volume, on, ba on balance volume, uh, relative strength index, ROC, a whole bunch of different indicators that you can use in your own programs. And although this library is fairly old, you know, these indicators are nothing new. Uh, many of them are, were invented many decades ago, so uh, they still apply today. So now I've searched for Python TA lib, and you'll see we get the Python wrapper for TA lib, and it has some installation instructions here. And so here's how you install it. So you click this install TA lib, and I'm installing this on Mac OS X, so if you're following along, you should be able to do what I'm doing. I can't install it on every operating system, but there should be installation instructions for whatever operating system you're on. Uh, I've heard it can be a little bit tricky depending on your OS, uh, but I verified that this works. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code, for instance, and there's this, just like any other Python package, there's pip install ta-lib. So I'm gonna do that, ta-lib, right? And so I'm gonna install that, and you'll see it's installed. And now notice this, if I run Python 3 and try to import it, uh, it gives me this error. Uh, it says uh, image not found, so it throws some errors here. So one thing, there's actually a dependency. So if you scroll down here, uh, on OS X, you should have something called Homebrew, right? Homebrew for OS X. And so if you have that installed, it's a package manager for OS X. And there's actually a dependency here, so you wanna, make sure you have this installed. So if you type brew install TA lib like this, uh, using homebrew, um, this will install a TA lib dependency. So you see it does a quick download for the Mac OS X version that I'm on and installs it, right? And so now I'm gonna rerun Python 3 and import TA lib and you'll see there's no error there. So it looks like I've successfully installed it. So let's see what we can do with that, okay? So I'm gonna close up some of this stuff that I already had open. So close that, that, and yeah, we have a bunch of different notepads that I kept open. So I'm gonna start a little more fresh here. So we have our chart and we have our readme, uh, and I won't save that. All right, cool. So let's, let's, let's try ta.py, and let's see if we can use this library now. So uh, let's see if we can find like a hello world example using talib. So it looks like it imports NumPy. So um, let's go ahead and add a requirements.txt here to this project. And it looks like I've used uh, Python Binance so far, and I've used uh, TALib, and that is TALib like that. So I'll add that in there. And also it looks like we need NumPy, so I'll put that in there. And I believe I already have NumPy installed, but just in case, I'll do pip3 install NumPy, right? And so NumPy is just a library, a scientific computing library. So it looks like uh, TALib accepts NumPy arrays. Okay, so now that I know all of my packages are installed, I'm gonna close that and look at my TA.py. And let's just take this little example here and make sure we can import NumPy and TALib, right? So uh, we're setting uh, a value called close where a variable called close equal to numpy.random100. And let's see what that does, right? I'm gonna print close. So I'm gonna run that, and you see it generates this list structure with a bunch of random numbers, and it looks like it's just numbers between zero and one. They're just all decimals. So what, is this a list, or is it an array, or what's a, what's a numpy array? So let's, let's look that up. What is the difference between a numpy array and a list. So a NumPy array, it says, is a grid of values and it's indexed by a tuple of non-negative integers. A list in Python is equivalent array, but is resizable and contained elements. So uh, what is the real difference here? So it looks like NumPy arrays are actually optimized for memory consumption 
and have a bunch of optimizations for space, memory, speed, and calculations. So looks like NumPy is just faster for some scientific computing. So if you're uh, multiplying these huge lists or these huge arrays of millions of numbers and performing all this floating point arithmetic and matrix operations and so forth, it's designed for the scientific uh, computing purposes. So looks like TA Lib, since it's for technical analysis, chose to use NumPy arrays as it's a, uh, for all of the data types that it operates on. So uh, we have a NumPy array uh, here of 100 random numbers here. All right, so an array of 100 numbers is not that interesting, but what is interesting is that we can build up a NumPy array of uh, closing prices for Bitcoin, for instance, or closing prices for the S&P 500, and we can have those in a NumPy array as a sequence, and then we can use TALib to operate on that sequence of values and apply all the different built-in functions and indicators that TALib has and let it perform calculations for us. So uh, what's an example, right? So um, let's pretend we have a sequence. Yeah, let, let's still do it on this random number first. And so let's look at the docs and looks like the simplest example, right, is a moving average. Everyone understands that. It just gets the average of the previous, you know, X periods, right? And so if I paste that in, right, we have our moving average equals TA lib and it has dot SMA. So um, there's a bunch of indicators uh, built in. So I could do talib.rsi, for instance, and that's one of the built-in functions, right? And so, yeah, let's see what the simple moving average is of uh, this NumPy array, which is just an array of closing values, right? And so if I print moving average here, and I run this again, you'll see previously we have this array of 100 numbers. And then if you look at the second array, which is the moving average, you can see a bunch of knotted numbers here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 24, 29. So there's not a, a number, a value here until the 30th slot in this array. And so what that means is by default, it uses the 30 day SMA. So there's not an average to take until um, 30 elements in. And then at the 31st element, you know, it does the previous 30 before those. So um, it's just an average that rolls through uh, this entire sequence, right? And so let's see how we might uh, adjust that a little bit. So um, let's see, indicators, momentum indicators. And so SMA, if we're correct, it's, yeah, so it's on overlap studies here. And so if we look at 30 day, uh, at SMA here, you can see the time period as we thought by default, based on our analysis, that the default time period is 30. But let's say we wanted the uh, 10, 10 day moving average, for instance. So we'll do time period equals 10. And I'll run it again. And you'll see the first nine slots are not a number. And then we have an average of the first 10 values. So that's how you calculate a moving average using TA lib. So uh, you might not care. Moving average, very simple. You don't need a special library for that. It's just an average. So uh, let's let's start getting more and more complex. Uh, a lot of these are actually very simple. Even you know RSI, very simple calculation. So let's go to momentum indicators here. And let's go to relative strength index. And so this is a way to calculate the RSI. And so what we can do now is do uh, RSI equals talib.rsi, close. And then it looks like the time period by default is 14. So I like that value. And so let's just print the RSI. So I run it again. And you see we have a bunch of varying values. Uh, they're random numbers. And so the RSI 14, and it looks like it's, you know, this is just some random numbers, so the, it's never really overbought or oversold. We just have some values that are like 40 or 50. So if we use that with some real price data, we'll probably be able to see some overbought or oversold values. So overbought is usually over 70 and oversold is below 30. So these random numbers aren't very interesting. So let's see if we can use some of the Bitcoin price data that we downloaded in the last video. So I have this 15 minutes.csv. Uh, I already forgot what time period that was for. Let me see. Let's get that real quick. And we can just see if there's some overbought or oversold value. So we can calculate the RSI uh, for this particular time period of prices. So this is from May 20th uh, until, let's see, maybe we have May 20th through May 25th. So we should get be able to pull out some overbought and oversold values from there. And so let's figure out how we can load this 15 minute CSV data 
uh, and to get the open high, low, close. Let's see if we can get the closing prices into a NumPy array and run this RSI indicator on that. So let's see how we do that. So uh, I will use Google and I type build NumPy array from CSV and let's see what it gives me. So it looks like there's this gen from text function. So I will import that and I'll say my data equals gen from text and I'll try this uh, 15 minutes dot CSV and we give it a delimiter of comma and yeah, let's print that out and see how it works. Let's see if that gives us what we need. So I'm going to comment out some stuff here and print just that my data there. All right, so I'm gonna run it again. All right, so look at that. So we have a lot of, so it looks like an array of arrays, which is good. And this first index from each list is the timestamp. And then we have some prices. So that's like 9,623, because you see that exponent, it's like e to the third, 10 to the third. And then, yeah, so it looks like that worked. We're able to pull in uh, an array of NumPy arrays using this gen from text function, right? So the next thing I wanna do, um, I want just the closing value from here. So we have timestamp, open, high, low, close. And so I want the zero, one, two, three, the fourth fourth value here. I, I don't, I'm not really that interested in all these other ones. I wanna use the closing price. So I wanna extract you know, this value, this value, this value all the way down, like this entire column of data. And so let's look up how we do that, right? So how to import a CSV file as an NumPy array. And it looks like you can access this sequence like this. So let's try that syntax, just like accessing a list like that. So we're gonna say the zero, one, two, three, fourth, zero, one, two, three, fourth. All right, cool. So we want the closing price low. So let's see if we say the closing price is my data. And then we have a colon and a four there and let's print the close. I run that and spell it correctly. And look at that. So let's see, is that correct? Yeah, 9,614.87, 9,414.5. 916, 87, 9414, 50, So that's great. So we have a sequence of uh, this closing price in these 15 minute candles, and we have it in a single NumPy array, which is great. So, uh, and then this was the 15 minute chart. And so let's see if we apply our RSI indicator to that. So talib.rsi for the close of our Bitcoin data. And then we print the RSI. I'm gonna run it. So you have a lot of different values here uh, that are between zero and 100. So these are RSI values. And let's see if we can find any points at which the price was overbought or oversold. So you'll see here near the end, there's a case where the RSI was above 70, which would be overbought. So let's see if we can verify that uh, using the data. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five data points back. So if you go back five data points, so from the end, so you'll see that the value is one, two, three, four, five. So 89.50 here was when it was overbought. And so if you look before that, you would expect prices to be rising rapidly. So there was probably a lot of momentum leading to an overbought state. And so let's see if those numbers rose and if that's correct, right? So you'll look, look at that. So we have, you'll see it was 87.55, 87.69, 87.89. And so it was rising till it's 8,800, then kept rising into 8,800s and then went all the way to 8,950. So there was a lot of momentum upward there leading to an overbought state. And also let's see if we can validate that. Let's try something like a trading view, right? And then let's see what date and time that corresponds to. So that was May 25th, which is uh, today. And that was around 12, 15 PM Pacific. So. I'm going to pull up the cryptocurrency data for Bitcoin, right? And let's see, Bitcoin USTT. And I'm gonna to go to the fully featured chart here. And let's try to pull up the RSI and compare to what we got from TA Lib just to verify we're doing this correctly. So I'm gonna look at the 15 minute chart. And then I already had the RSI pulled up. And if you look here, sure enough, at 1215 here, it looks like this is where that overbought condition occurred, which was when uh, 
Bitcoin was at about 89.50. So you see this run here. Um, this led to the overbought. And so you see this RSI at the bottom, and then it rose and briefly went above 70. Okay, so I think I'm going to end the video here. This one's running a bit long. I ch I'm trying to keep every video between 10 and 15 minutes or so. Uh, this one's already over 15 minutes, and I feel pretty good about what we covered so far. Uh, we showed how to install the TA lib library uh, as a Python package. We showed how to read in some data using uh, NumPy arrays. So we re uh, read in our Bitcoin historical price data into a NumPy array, and then we were able to run some TA lib indicators against this NumPy array. So we were able to calculate a simple moving average using uh, TA lib, and we're also able to calculate the RSI and determine a point at which Bitcoin price was overbought today. And we compared that against uh, this graph, this RSI indicator, in trading view just to confirm our analysis was correct and we we're able to detect when this price rose here from 8700 to uh, 8950 and confirm that the rsi went above 70 at that point in time so it looks like we have a pretty good idea of how to use ca lib indicators um, so I'm going to stop it here, and in the next video, we're going to continue our discussion of TA Lib and try to combine it with BackTrader for backtesting, and maybe we'll cover some more indicators and uh, see what happens when we uh, buy and sell uh, Bitcoin based on these indicators and see what our results would be when initializing an account with a certain balance of, say, $100,000. So uh, stay tuned for the next video, and thanks for watching.